Hello and welcome back to Scandi Pictures. Hooray! <laughs> How are you doing today, Therese? I'm okay, thank you. Slightly overheated, but uh, grateful for the sunshine. And I also just had a new pair of running shoes delivered this morning, so I'm very oh, excited. Wow. But you're being very sporty. I'm being uh, very lazy, but what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, don't know. An excuse to get something that looks like, um, well, I'm going to look like when I wear them, the 10 year old from the 90s trying to be cool. There's like iridescent soles and well, you know, we were both 10 years old at some point in the 90s, one way, so. We were. I definitely wasn't cool when I was 10, though. So <laughs> this is revenge. <laughs> uh, the more astute of you might notice that I'm not sitting in my usual room. And uh, unlike last time, I'm actually not in the UK at the moment. I'm in Norway. And I've been in Norway for about a month. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, slightly different. Don't know how long I'm going to be here for, but um, at least I've got this little office room to work in. So now it's been a while since we did our last podcast. I can't actually remember when we did one uh, and I can't remember what we talked about. So mm, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, no, actually, uh, that's probably something that we could have looked up before yeah, we launched ooh. into this conversation. Where do we pick up from? But yeah, yeah, we've had a little, I suppose, accidental summer break almost. Yeah, it's been <laughs> uh, uh, it's been a bit of a break, but I think, you know, it, it was like, good for me to get a bit of a break for sure. Yeah, me too. Three weeks? Could that yeah, be something, right? Something like something that. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. So whatever we talked about was certainly really interesting. Well, so I look interesting, forward yeah. to continuing our conversation. <laughs> and today will be no exception. So today we are going to be talking about microphones. And uh, microphones, of course, are very important, not just for singers, but, you know, pretty much for everyone these days uh because microphones are ubiquitous as they say you find them in your phone you find them in your tv you find them in you know some people probably have them in like their toasters and uh mm. fridges um some people have them set up all around their house mm -hmm. without them knowing well, <laughs> well some people have them <laughs> set up all, all over their house and they do know about it. Stuff like if you've got a smart home and you say stuff like, OK, Google, then that's yeah. a microphone picking up you saying, OK, Google. Um, but microphones are, you know, uh, maybe not a, a recent invention, but it's an invention that is just over 100 years old. And uh, there, and the fact that they become so all-encompassing is very interesting, and especially for people like us who work in uh, work with sound. Uh, microphones are very important, and we, um, yeah, you basically can't get away from using a microphone these days, um, and uh, for better or for worse, which we'll get into in a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first of all, let me ask you, Therese, what is a microphone? No, you don't do that to me. Yeah, like, what, do, what? Therese, you know, I do this every time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, in the very, like, practical sense, I'm not going to go into, like, the um, the actual... Um, but, yeah, how far do you want me to go, honestly? Well, uh, no, anyway, a microphone is a device that mm -hmm. um, picks up sound mm -hmm. from whatever that may be. And then, depending on um, what you want it to do or what it does do, that sound can be transmitted via other devices uh, to be used, for example, when recording sound or um, amplifying sound and a whole range yeah. of other practical uses. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's pretty much it, isn't it? Thank um, you. Yeah, well, <laughs> 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 I don't, don't worry, I, because, uh, of course, it's we use microphones, but uh, I mean, knowing how a microphone works and stuff is quite specialist knowledge, and I'm not going to claim that I'm an expert in the least. I've definitely um, been taught it at some point yeah. by someone, but that was a long time ago, and I do not remember the ins and outs. There's yeah, wires. <laughs> uh, there's wires. <laughs> of course, the, the, the main thing to know about a microphone is that it can sense sound and what it does it it trans uh, it it converts that sound into a signal usually an electric signal which then can be you know processed in some way so a microphone actually works quite similar to the way our ears work which i find very interesting because we have an eardrum 
that mm. when it's hit by sound waves, it starts to vibrate. And you find a very similar thing in a microphone. It's called the membrane. And when the sound hits the membrane, which is just like a thin material of some sort, then that starts to vibrate. And um, then there is some sort of conduit that then uh, will interpret those vibrations. Now, there's a whole range of different microphones. I'm not going to claim that I know how they all work because that's a little bit outside of my field of expertise. But that is kind of the, the gist of what a microphone does. It senses sound waves uh, through vibration and then um, changes them into a signal. Now, sound wa- uh, um, microphones and loudspeakers actually work the same way, just in reverse. So if you have a loudspeaker, it does the opposite. It has a bit of energy that hits the membrane, which is then transferred into sound waves and then usually like amplified and stuff. Have you ever tried as a child putting your headphones into the, the microphone sockets on your computer and recording yourself? Um, I can't say I have. No, it's interesting because you can actually, I can take these uh, headphones of mine, put them into an, a headphone jack, uh, sorry, mm-hmm. into a, a microphone jack, and I can actually record myself. But because it's designed to work in the other direction, then you pro- you end up with quite poor sound quality. But what's interesting is yeah. microphones and loudspeakers pretty much work the same way, just in opposite directions. Mm. Uh, I find that kind of stuff really interesting. <laughs> okay, so just a little bit of history. The development of the microphone runs in tandem with the development of the telephone. And of course, this makes sense because the, both mm-hmm. devices are concerned with uh, projecting sound over a distance. Um, one recording it, and of course, the, the telephone sending it, you know, however far you want it to go. And we find kind of the first microphone designs pop up around the mid 1800s. And um, if you look at, say, the, the early telephones used by people like, say, you know, Alexander Graham Bell and stuff, they all use different kind of approaches for creating, uh, for, you know, recording the sound and transmitting it. But the very first kind of, uh, the, the, the progenitor or the prototype of the modern microphone, which is called the carbon microphone, that was invented around 1870. And in fact, you and I, we probably grew up in houses where they still used telephones with carbon microphones in them. So they were used for like mm. a really long time. Um, but they were later, of course, uh, superseded by other microphones because with microphones, um, you know, it's, it's always a question of what materials you're using, how do they impact the sound? And of course you want to get the one that has kind of that, 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 that creates the least amount of uh, reduction in the sound quality. So um, a microphone that we probably use the most, which is the condenser microphone, that was invented around 1960. So it's, you've had these microphones around for, you know, just over 100 years. And um, now sound, people could kind of record sounds before this, but the microphones really did quite a lot for you know, enabling people to record themselves and whether they record speech or they recorded for broadcast or they recorded, you know, for all sorts of reasons, that kind of was a really, really mm. thing that came out of microphones. And uh, I'm going to uh, say that I, I personally think that the development of the microphone is probably the most important development to come uh, into the history of music of all time. And why would I... Fair. And why do you think I would make such a sweeping, you know, statement as the microphone's the most important development in music? Well, it enables people to hear hear music that they might not otherwise have heard. Like, Absolutely, as as you say, it's a, it's something that enables us to, um, you know, uh, transfer sound over a distance. And mm-hmm. if we hadn't had the ability to to record voices or broadcast voices, then there are some voices that are considered absolutely iconic now that mm. we would just never know yeah uh, unless unless you were alive uh and could hear those voices at the yeah. time when they were performing and lucky enough to be in a venue where said people were performing yeah because you think of you know you know the people that were referred to as great performers before the time of microphones so people like say um vivaldi who was you know mm. known to be an exceptional violinist we only really know that because people said that he was. But yeah. can you imagine like having been able to listen to him and, you know, been able to hear what he actually played like and stuff? Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, for all we know, he could have been absolute crap. <laughs> well, yeah, that's also interesting. It's always, 
until the invention of microphones and the ability to produce recordings, mm. every description of music that you ever receive is very subjective. And when microphones came into the picture, suddenly you can actually listen to, say, an Indian classical musician. Even if you've never been to India, you can mm. listen to them performing. And instead of having someone explain to you what they sound like, instead you can actually hear it. Now, of mm. course, I'm not going to say that microphones don't you know, don't have some sort of effect on the sound. You listen to old recordings and, you mm. know, before we perfected the recording process, there was all sorts of things that could go wrong because you had to press the sound onto a medium of some sort. And sometimes, you know, you'd have problems with, you know, back when they did it on wax cylinders, you could have problems with a needle, you could have problems with mm. like, you know, um, uh, with the wax cylinder itself. And of course, yeah. over time, uh, stuff deteriorates. Uh, so now that everything's digital, this is a lot less of a problem. But if you listen to some of the very earliest recordings from like the nineteen, you know, the nineteen hundreds, nineteen tens, a lot of them have really poor sound quality, and that you know is probably you know because there's a lot of stuff that goes into producing a record that isn't just the microphone. Um, yeah. But anyway, that is a little bit of a digression. Now, what I wanted to get at was that suddenly we can listen to music from all over the world and we get yeah. this huge influx of different, you know, kinds of music that we otherwise would never have been exposed mm. to. Yeah. Okay. Or but, not as likely anyway. Yeah, yeah, unless you travelled there and you, <laughs> you had the means to do that. Yeah, or to touring is another <laughs> option. It's another opportunity to hear people. Just saying, because it doesn't really exist at the moment. Well, I mean... <laughs> We've got to talk about the touring musicians. Of course. Right, so now for singers, what effect does the fact that we now have some microphones have on our singing? Um, I mean, you know, it's a, just speaking from a very practical standpoint and thinking of what it can do as a tool for a singer, mm -hmm. um, starting just with oneself, like having the ability to listen back to yourself is... Mm -hmm is pretty great um mm -hmm. and just like i think it can open up so much room for um self-reflection and improvement of your own voice or like you can you can and, and and having an idea um that's stronger because obviously we all hear our voices differently in our heads to mm -hmm. how they sound but actually like f listening to yourself speak or sing regularly you can actually have a, you can develop an understanding of what your voice sounds like to others, even when you don't hear that in your own head. So you can manipulate your own sound um, a bit more. But then oh. that's not always how you want to be singing. Uh, so obviously, <laughs> like, I think the starting point is like <laughs> the performance itself uh, yeah. usually does the job. But then also in terms of like, a, um, a, you know, a promotion tool, for singers, like having having the ability to um, send a voice, as it were, all over the world, um, that's obviously a big a big change. Um, mm. And that also, it's the it's that thing of like people can form their own ability of uh, their own ability, their own opinion. Mm. <laughs> uh, they have the ability to form their own opinion about um, a particular voice or a particular musician or a particular sound. Um, and you don't just have to go by sort of legend or what other people say um, someone sounds like, um, because everything is subjective and we don't all love the same sounds. We don't all, um, we're not all inspired by the same voices. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are just the, the, the basic, <laughs> the basic things of what a microphone can do for a singer, but also like, you know, being able to perform in larger venues to larger audiences, if you don't, um, if you don't sing in a way that projects over an orchestra, um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. to be able to sing, obviously like to be able to sing with an amplified ensemble, um, that that's pretty huge um which oh, absolutely it's very difficult if you don't have have a microphone yourself yeah i think there's uh definitely the the aspect of amplification is really important mm -hmm. uh when it comes to singing in ways that aren't you know designed to be super loud yeah um which of course we've already 
you know, we've already kind of talked about the the way that you have to develop your voice in order to you know produce a sound that is really loud and mm-hmm. that's you know that's historically been a real uh issue when mm-hmm. performing in big rooms whereas with microphones suddenly that is less of a problem because now mm-hmm. you can sing a lullaby but because you've got a microphone that can be then artificially amplified um and you don't have to concern yourself so much with just being loud 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 make sure that mm-hmm. people in the back seats can hear you that work is partially taken care of and it opens up this whole new field of vocal effects that just previously you couldn't do and experimentation as well it allows Mm -hmm. for i suppose a much um yeah much more intimate exploration of how you how you want to sing when Mm -hmm. the aim is not always to be heard Mm -hmm. um because it's a it's a completely different thing, and I mean I'm not gonna lie, I I <laughs> I, I do love projecting into a big room and um, and singing to be heard, <laughs> but um, but yeah, microphones are really handy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even just the fact that, of course, there's a lot involved in what we're doing right now, but the, mm. the fact that we can talk to each other when we're sitting in different countries. Yes. Um, is partially made possible because of microphones and you know they're they're now projecting well not not you know hmm. through <laughs> through this the physical space between us kind of but my voice is being transmitted to you um partially through the yeah. medium of a microphone and so yeah for singers you certainly now have the option of of using different approaches hmm. um and i also the the fact that you can listen back to your voice is so uh such an important development i think as well because prior to microphones and kind of very easy access to recordings i mean microphones did part of it but the fact that these days you can pretty much record yourself on the spot and listen back to it Mm. that's a a pretty big deal because in the past you were completely dependent on another person um telling you whether or not you were you know how you sounded because you always observe your own voice from inside your head through vibrations through your bones and stuff and not actually just the 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 the, the air as such Mm. so uh, it's a very common uh misconception that people think their voices are a lot deeper and more resonant than they are Mm. because you're observing it through bone conduction as well as a bit of air so you have a completely different sensation uh, or you know impression of your voice than what other people will have yeah and being able to work out what you sound like prior to microphones would have been completely dependent on having another person mm. tell you and you know instruct you yeah. so it's for me for instance having you know been able to develop my voice by actually listening back to recordings of myself has been really really useful to be like oh i am mm. actually singing the bit in the notes here and oh this is this is coming out a little bit you know a bit honky or whatever <laughs> which might not be yeah. so easy to perceive if you're just hearing your voice from inside your head no no exactly um <laughs> well, yeah i mean that being said like i think there was until i mean i don't know if it might it still lingers in some ways i guess but um I used to have like a proper fear of microphones like that sort of because it is um, as much as it can be a sort of like you can gain control in so many ways. It's so many ways. So many ways. You come from Scandinavian today. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) In so many ways you can uh, you can gain a bit more control over the sound. But Mm -hmm. then um, because you're not you're usually not the person controlling the sound, especially not during a live mm. performance. Um, it's quite rare that you would be the one uh, actually um, being in control of what sound comes out to the people hearing it. Um, so that sort of loss of control um, freaked me out for a while and until it's kind of like, you know, until I grew up and realized that you just got to give yourself over a little bit and trust that people who do their job can do their job because they can and they're amazing um Mm. and and um and yeah so i think um but it's it so depends on as well like what sort of what sort of thing you grew up with because in the beginning before you maybe start singing a lot with microphones then you do especially if you start singing really early like me like i started singing you know pretty much from the get-go um Mm. and you have people sort of telling you uh stuff about how you sing and like oh 
yeah, you sing so amazingly and like la la la. And when you're in school, a lot of the time it is that sort of like, if you can project, then you're automatically somehow a good singer a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So that became a sort of, because um, I have a relatively big voice and I can make myself heard in larger rooms without, so <laughs> thank you, uh, without necessarily, without it necessarily being like all shouty. It's just, mm -hmm. I seem to be able to project in that way, then, then it sort of became a thing that, oh, I'm a little bit freaked out by introducing a microphone because I am not going to be able to control my sound in the same way. Um, that was the sort of feeling initially. And then obviously, uh, as time went on, it, it certain, certain performances are, it is in certain performances, it is necessary to have a microphone and it does make it a lot better when someone can control the overall sound picture, especially like, you know, um, when sound sound needs to be mixed with other, um, other sounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's, it is a challenge for sure, uh, introducing a microphone into your performance because it, it adds another element that also, you know, you need to be mm -hmm. aware of and you need to, uh, you know, uh, know how to use properly because, yeah. uh, microphones do, you, you need to have some technique around the way you use them to be able to use them properly. And it's, um, uh, I will say I've, um, I've, I have a bit of a love and hate relationship with amplified music performances mm. because while I appreciate, you know, that it's really fantastic how you can amplify, I think it's often not done correctly yeah. as in, uh, you know, maybe someone is a great singer, but they don't uh, maybe have a correct approach when it comes to microphones. So like, for instance, so I've got my, uh, my dynamic microphone here. Some people might hold it up here, for instance. That's mm. not good. They might hold it too far away from their face while they're singing quietly or conversely, they might hold it up here while they're belting, which is also not good. Uh, and it's stuff that's that's not obvious. That isn't obvious. Um, no. So it takes a bit of extra training as a performer to learn how to use microphones. Mm. And then there's the sound engineer. And there, yeah. unless you know the person and they know the music, then, and very often when we do performances, we don't really know the sound engineer because venues will mm. often have their own dedicated sound engineer who knows you know, their setup, who knows their equipment, who knows where everything goes. And they're very yeah. comfortable with the equipment in that venue, but they were, might not be uh, comfortable with the, your music. They might not be comfortable with, uh, with you personally, which is another mm -hmm. thing. Um, we used to uh, be told back in music college that you always want to be really, really super nice to the sound engineer because they can make a soprano sound like a baritone, <laughs> uh, which is, I thought was a quite funny analogy yeah. but it's completely true it's if the sound engineer either intentionally or not intentionally mm -hmm. doesn't do their job then that can really destroy our performance and i've i've had that be my experience a lot of time where i go to a venue and it's you know it's too loud it's mm -hmm. there's too many there's too strong frequencies in a certain frequency range that makes my ears hurt and that is that could be, you know, because of improper mic technique, or it could be because it's mm -hmm. not being mixed correctly on the spot. So there's all sorts of challenges that are introduced through using microphones as well. Um, and maybe, uh, of course, it'll, it'll vary depending on where you go, but um, yeah. it's, it's a genuine consideration that um, has a lot of impact on performances. Mm. No, completely. <laughs> yeah. Which is also but, kind of why I sometimes I'm quite drawn towards classical music because they take away that. So that's, uh, that's yeah. rarely an issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, performing classical music in churches is just bliss. <laughs> yeah. But of course that's had, you know, that's had hundreds, thousands of years of, of history behind it. Whereas microphones, as I mentioned in the beginning, that's a hundred years. And it's actually still quite new. It is. Yeah. Uh, and it's a really powerful thing. And it's, you know, it's definitely, as I said, a significant development that I appreciate. And I, you know, I think it's very, very important, but it does require uh, a somewhat different approach than what we had before. Yeah. No. Um, okay. So let's, uh, let me just check my time. 
Um, gotcha. So can we maybe share just quickly at the end, what's your best experience working with a microphone and what's your worst experience working with a microphone? You first. Me first? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, my best experience is working with microphones is when I almost don't know that they're there. Yeah. Um, where I, uh, I perform and the microphone does its job, but then that's usually done in a way where the microphone is in a fixed spot where I don't have to interact mm. with it much. That, of course, also comes from me not having a whole lot of training using a microphone. Uh, so stuff like choir performances, for instance, where mm. uh, that was a really good one we did uh, in November. Uh, I don't think you were on it. It was a lot of contemporary voices performance where I we just had these microphones above us and we were just singing and mm, yeah. and and they just kind of did their job and then the sound engineer did his job a great sound engineer and mm. you know listening to some friends in the audience afterwards they said that the sound was spectacular and fantastic mm. and then i thought because there were just uh, there was just a couple of us that was really made possible by using microphones then yeah now when it comes to worst uh now i've um I have to confess that my worst experiences of microphones has been being in the audience in a situation where um, you're, uh, you, you've got a combination of a, a performer who maybe doesn't quite know how to use the microphone and a sound engineer who's maybe not mm. fully paying attention. Yeah. So I, w I was actually, oh God, it was last week. I wouldn't call it the worst, but it was, it was pretty bad. You have a choir on stage and you have a band on the side and the band is super loud. They've marked mm. everything. The choir, you can, you can barely hear the choir. There's 20 of them. You can barely hear them because all you hear is electric, electric guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and then I, you know, I can't say for certain that this was the case, but I think just the, um, there was a combination of the singers not knowing quite how to use the microphones mm. and the sound engineer not really instructing them on where to stand properly. And also yeah. the sound engineer favoring the guitar and the drums and not really focusing on getting the, the voices amplified. So yeah. that was, yeah, I was not enjoying that. And it was a shame because they were doing a good job performing and I couldn't hear them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I think, um, yeah, my, my experience is probably like <laughs> reasonably similar. And I think mm -hmm. it's got a lot to do with, um, as you say, when you've got, when you're using microphones and you've got, a top-notch sound engineer um, mm -hmm. who you just completely trust from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to do that anyway because yeah, yeah. they're there. They're there to do a job, and they're gonna do the job. And mm -hmm. you might not always agree with how it's done, but um, but yeah. And when you when you just feel from the get-go, and you just know that okay, this is this is fine. Um, and also, like because one of the issues I have with microphones um, sometimes is. Um, the result, especially when you're singing in a cappella formation, for example, like in a small a cappella ensemble, mm -hmm. and you can't hear each other, uh, that's annoying. So the best <laughs> experiences of using microphones in the, those contexts are always kind of, uh, for one, when you know that there's a great sound engineer, and you can all hear each other, you can all hear yourselves, and mm -hmm. everybody's got their individual mic that they're um, that you know assigned to and you're looking after that one and you just know that you do your own thing and you control your own technique um with your own mic um those are obviously like the best circumstances and like you say when you don't really have to think much about them being there because you know mm -hmm. that someone else is making it sound sound good so all you need to worry about is hearing yourself and hearing each other yeah. um and yeah and also like you say in sort of yeah when you don't really have to think about it, I think is the best experience. Um, yeah. and yeah, so sort of worst experiences, I suppose, is the, like the opposite of that. Um, when, when mic sharing is not, um, is not possible to do properly. Um, yeah, just kind of have like, to awkwardly huddle around the microphone. Yeah. And... Yeah. And that, and that always, that, well, no, that always, um, seems to happen, um, when you're having to, when you're when you're in a choir of, of a few people um mm -hmm. because it's that sort of assumption that um oh yeah there's a lot of them so we'll hear them 
But actually, as a result, when you're sort of three, sometimes even four people sharing one, uh, <laughs> one like directional dynamic microphone, yeah. uh, it's uh, you've got to lean in really close to yeah. actually be heard. Um, so, so for one, that doesn't look good. So it's very difficult to actually do. Uh, yeah. And then you're very, very close to other people, like an effect of this whole global pandemic i'm hoping will be mm -hmm. that that's never ever going to be allowed again uh yeah. <laughs> and not that it not that i you know mind getting close to people but you know what i mean it's uh, it's but not also, ideal for someone like me who's re I'm, I'm really tall you're really so tall. i have to like huddle down and that's not good for yeah. my technique either <laughs> yeah uh, no exactly like have we ever had to share a microphone <laughs> but I hope not because we're really different heights. I don't think it would we be have. really difficult. No, I don't think we have actually. But I, but yeah, there have definitely been occasions where there's where you know you're sharing microphones with people who are completely different height to you because you've got to be the ones to share because mm. you're the ones singing the same part, for example. So it makes sense. Um, mm. But yeah, but also like it may, it's even harder if you're if you're um, not off book and everybody's got folders she, with she music. music. Also like, leaning into it. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of, like, I've had a lot of neck pain from those kinds of experiences. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I yeah. guess we can summarize by saying uh, microphones, uh, fairly recent invention, very, very important for being able to listen to music all over the world, important for uh, allowing singers and, you know, by extension, other instrumentalists to use new and interesting ways of performing, singing, um, not just being completely dependent on extreme projection, but having, you know, a, a medium that carries it uh, mm. uh, out, even if it's quiet. And that they can uh, ha be used to great effect, but there's also situations where they can be problematic. So it's a, it's a, um, something that... Work in progress. Be, it's a work in progress, but <laughs> it's... Uh, uh, I think overall, it's it's a really, really good thing that microphones became a thing because it allows me to talk to you from Norway while you're in the UK, which is, yes. you know. <laughs> yeah, and we can actually do projects together and record and together we, still. And we are. I mean, we, and we are. Done, yeah, we've done a whole, like, I've done a whole choir out of the two of us uh, yeah. on a few tracks. It's, it's great fun. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Scandi Pitches. Please let us know if you have any interesting information to share about microphones, if you have any particularly joyous experiences using one, or if you have some that made you hate them but never want to use them again, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> and we will see you in the next episode of Scandi Pitches. Bye-bye.